Hey everyone, welcome back to Williamson Ridge Outdoors. Today we are back in the garage because I've got a little repair to make on our Coyote CS2520S. So a little while back when I was doing my service and I was underneath the tractor, I noticed that my hydrostatic transmission fan had blades broken off of it. So I contacted the tractor shop in South Webster, Ohio, which is my Coyote dealer. He said to send him some pictures of it, and I did, and he got back with me in just a few minutes and said that, hey, he had the part ordered, and it should be in just a couple days. So a couple days later, uh, he sent me a message, said, hey, your part's here. So I didn't know if this would be a warranty thing or not, because I don't know what exactly happened. There could have been a stick or anything that got pushed up in there and hit that fan and broke those blades off. I don't recall hearing anything like that, but it definitely could have happened. I mean, I've run the tractor, you know, through the woods and I've had it on uh, trails and stuff where there's sticks and all that kind of stuff. Plus, you know, when you're mowing, if there's a stick in your yard, a lot of times you know, that could ride up the front of the mower deck and they'd kind of aim it right into where that fan's at. Coyote replaced that under warranty. The dealer told me, hey, bring your tractor in, you know, we'll change it out for you. But I asked him, I said, well, you know, can I change it out? Is that okay with you and, and Coyote? And he said, yeah, that was fine. Of course, I wanted to change it myself because I wanted to make a video about it in case somebody else runs into this. And if it's not under warranty, then you'll at least know how to do this. So this is the new fan, Coyote Genuine Parts. And like I say, I do want to point out that my dealer offered to take care of this and change this for me. I'm the one that decided that I did not want them to do it. I wanted to do it myself as long as they were okay with me changing it because they did warranty it and they, you know, I didn't, there, there was no charge on this whatsoever. So he said that was fine and either way, whatever way it worked for me the best, then that was perfectly fine with them. So uh, I appreciate them doing that because, you know, that again, I wanted to make a video on how to do it. So I've got a six millimeter hex key or Allen wrench, but I've got it in a socket form. So I'm gonna need just a little bit of an extension on that. So now we've got our drive shaft loose and there's a bolt right here on this fan. So let me grab a socket and we're gonna pull that loose. So I'm trying to make sure too that if there's anything like these lock washers and flat washers, they need to stay on and go back exactly the same. Now, if you notice there, this transmission will free spin now that it's not hooked up to the drive shaft. So I put these two bolts back in it and then that way I could stick a screwdriver up there and keep this thing from turning. And now as I'm looking at this, I see there's a splined a little gear thing right here and this should come off. It's 
So there it is. So now on this transmission housing, there's a ring right here on this. This should be locked into place, which it is. So we're not going to bother anything else on this part of it. There's something I do notice right here is I'm noticing a little bit of leakage of transmission fluid. It looks like around this housing. We'll have to keep an eye on that. So it looks like that seal might be seeping a little bit of transmission fluid. So now we have the fan off. It comes off with that metal mount. It's only got two 10 millimeter bolts in here to take this loose. And I'm shocked these things are really actually pretty loose. It did not feel like that they were much more than finger tight. So also notice the orientation of your fan whenever you are pulling this loose. So that way you can put your new one back on the same way. So the flat side of the fan is mounted towards the metal housing or the metal mount. So now we've got our new fan. We're going to put it on. This actually only will mount one way. Uh, the holes will only line up in one spot. So even though the fan has four holes, only two of them will match the holes that's in the mount. So now we're just going to snug these up. I'm not going to make them real tight because again, well one, this is plastic, but two, uh, they were not very tight from the factory. So I'm not going to torque them down or anything, but I'm just going to kind of snug them up to where they, they feel like, you know, they're not going to come loose. And that feels pretty good right there. So we'll go ahead and put the fan back in here. I'm just going to work it up in the area here. The other one was definitely a lot easier to take out because it was missing a bunch of blades. So we're just going to line our shaft up, get our spline matched up, and that slides right back into place. So now we've got our 12 millimeter bolt. And this one has that flat washer which goes against the metal housing. And then the lock washer goes on the head side of the bolt. So again, this one does not have to be extremely tight either, or at least it wasn't extremely tight whenever I took it off, but I did snug it up just where it felt comfortable, but I didn't want to over tighten it. So now we can take our bolts back out and then go ahead and line our drive shaft back up. So I don't know if you can see what I was doing right there, but you have to get these holes lined up to the holes on the shaft and you can't turn the drive shaft because it's attached to the engine. And so you have to turn the transmission. So it's just kind of a little bit of trial and error there to be able to get that lined up. 
a little tricky because you can't get both hands under here. So I'm trying to get to hold the shaft in place and tighten the bolt at the same time, which is proving to be quite difficult. Okay. Uh, getting that first one is a little bit difficult. So now that the shaft's held in place, the others will just go right in there. I didn't tighten those bolts down just yet because I'm going to turn the drive shaft so that I can get to the other side and put this last one in. And then I'm going to snug them all up because I just barely snug the others. And then I'll go around and tighten them all down evenly. I can go ahead and take my screwdriver or whatever you have to kind of stick up in there to hold this shaft from spinning. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. That wasn't too bad. It did take me a little bit of time because of some trial and error, but uh, once I figured out exactly what tools to use and you know how I was gonna keep the drive shaft from spinning or how to keep the transmission from spinning, then it, it, the process is actually really easy. So you only need a few tools to be able to do this yourself. So if you ever have this repair, this should, it, you shouldn't be afraid to kind of tackle this on your own. So I would like to give a shout out to my dealer, which is the tractor shop in South Webster, Ohio. I deal with Ron there and Ron is just, he's been great. You know, anything that I had questions about, he always answers it in a timely fashion, whether I send him a message on Facebook or if I call him up or something, you know, I mean, he's, he's knowledgeable, knows his stuff and can really uh, answer any questions, you know, that I have. So I really appreciate that with a dealer and having that dealer backing because whenever you're buying something like this you're not just buying the machine you're kind of investing into that dealer too and you hope that your dealer you know is fair and legit with you and you know I've heard stories and stuff on some Facebook groups saying that dealers basically they didn't even give you a chance they just assumed it was your fault and they wouldn't even really try to help people out so in my case so far, my dealer, like I say, is a tractor shop in South Webster, Ohio, and they have been fantastic uh, dealing with anything. And I bought quite a few pieces of equipment from them, and then now a tractor, and everything I've dealt with them has been great. I thought I'd just kind of share this with you in case you run into this problem. Stay tuned because I do have a video coming that's going to be a solution for this to more than likely never happen again. Thanks to all my subscribers and the support that they show, leaving comments and, you know, hitting that thumbs up button. So thanks again for checking out the video today. Share it with all your coyote friends. And until next time, I'll see you outdoors.